It's only a dream. I'm here, dear. Don't be afraid. Paul, why can't you like me a little bit? It's not that I don't like you, but... Well, you're not my mother. How can I make you understand? Your mother was my dearest friend. When we were children, we, we went to school together. We played here in this very valley. We grew up together. All the people here knew us. They all know you now. This is your home, Paul. Oh, they don't know me. At school, I don't even understand half they're saying. Nonsense. You speak perfect English. Your mother saw to that. It's the slang that puzzles you. But you'll catch on. Paul, listen. I'm afraid that society won't let me keep you here if... if we don't learn to be happy together. Not at the orphanage. Not back there. We're all those children. I don't really hate people. It, it's just that... We're all that scared of, of almost everybody. Please don't send me back. Paul. Now that school's out for the summer, how would you like to stay at the mission? Father Matthew is a very kind man, and he understands little boys. Oh, he talk religion and stuff. Not if you didn't want him to. Or you'd have a lot of fun there playing in the fields with the animals. You know, they have some sheep and a cow and a goat. You think I could stay out in the field with the sheep sometimes? And you think Father Matthew would let me take care of him? All by myself? I'm sure he would. You know, everyone has to work at the mission. Well, I'll go if... Anyhow, I won't have to be bothered with people.
in. So glad you stopped by. Is Paul around? No, no. He's out in the fields with his friends. Friends? The goats, the sheep, and the cow. Oh. <laughs> How is he getting along? Still quite shy, of course. But our quiet life here at the mission is working wonders with him. Father, hmm? you must help me. In a few weeks, that little boy was with me. I learned to love him very much. It would break my heart if the society took him back to the orphanage. That we must prevent. The boy's only trouble is his sensitivity, his feeling that he doesn't belong, his, his insecurity. As long as he can avoid people, he's quite happy. But of course that can't go on indefinitely. Oh, the poor child, he's suffered so. Memories are very hard to erase, Father. Yes, indeed they are. But I think Paul's memories are fading. He never speaks a word in his native language now, and he's so bright and quick to learn. Right now, you couldn't tell him from any typical American boy. Thanks to that book you gave him, he'll soon be the slangiest young fellow in the valley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how my husband would have loved him. Ever since Fred didn't return from overseas, I, I've been very lonely. Paul filled an emotional need, I suppose. I know. Too bad I couldn't get close to him while he was with me. Give him time, Mrs. Graham. If I can get Paul to believe in something, in anything, the rest will be easy. Father, you're so understanding. And I know you'll explain everything to the society. I'll write to them now. They won't take Paul away. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
One what, boy? A wild dog. One of the sheep killers. Why, well, that's a tame dog, Paul. Here, boy. Here. Here, boy. Here. Come on. There, you see. Why, he's quite tame. Pet him a little. He looks just like the others. Sure, and maybe there's some of his blood in them. This is a fine dog, Paul. Feel the firm muscles of him. Oh, no. What? What's this? A nameplate. Rin, Tin, Tin. That must be the dog's name. Come on, be friendly with him. Pet him a little. Go ahead. Oh, now, don't be afraid. That's just his way of saying hello to you. I tell you what, you get acquainted with the dog and I'll do the chore. friendly dog he is, he you, hmm? Yes, Father. And you think maybe we could keep him? Someone may claim him. We mustn't get too attached to him for a while. Oh, I hope he's a stray, like me. Where God is, son, there are no strays. Yes, Father. All we need is a bit of faith, Paul, just to believe in something good. You know, there's a saying in the Bible, man can't live by bread alone. Yes, Father. And that doesn't mean anything about a balanced diet. Like spinach or stuff. Does the cook know this? Oh. It means we also need spiritual food, an inner faith or belief in something, or we dry up inside. When we discover this. But, Father, about Rin, nobody claims him. <laughs> he may live here, of course. Oh, thank you, Father. Come on in. Come on in.
the valley sheep men would never forgive us if we let Rin go wild and mix with the coyote. We must keep him locked up in the barn. My best wife. Now, now, Paul. You know Brother John would never approve if he saw Rin on the bed. And there's nice clean straw for him in the barn. Good night, son. That's okay. Don't get mad, Father. You gotta have some faith. Come on, Rin. dark barn with the dog. That's right. Remember what I told you about getting him to believe in something? In anything? Well, this dog may be the very thing he needs. Anyway, I'm sure it's a step in the right direction. I knew you would. What? what? Oh, yes, yes. I I'll let you know. Goodbye.
Smokey. I'm afraid of fun hear you about this. He does all kinds of things. He's a humdinger. A very intelligent dog. I think you're getting over some of your shyness, Paul. You're going to like it at school this fall. But couldn't you just go on with your reading and writing and stuff, Father? You mustn't even hold that thought, son. You're not going to be afraid anymore. Not afraid of crowds, not afraid of groups of boys, not afraid of being indoors. But I can't help it. It comes over me sudden. And I get all hot and sweaty, and then I want to run. You want friends, don't you? Friends, my friend. He's better than people. And not you, Father. Better than most people, I mean. The good Father loves all people because he understands them. And the helpless appeal not in vain. To him come all who are heavy laden and oppressed. Paul. Rin's tired. I guess I'll put poor old lonesome Rin in the barn. We're forgetting something, Paul. Come. Oh, Heavenly Father, make us firm in thy faith. Without belief, without faith in thee and in mankind, we are as nothing. Please give us courage. Dispel our timidity. Take away these nameless fears that beset us. Make us strong and courageous in thy faith, O Lord. Amen. Paul, it's not religion I'm trying to stuff you with. It's a belief in something. I believe in rent. Of course you do. And please, God, the dog may be your link back to reality. Could he stay in my room tonight, please, Father? No, no, we've been over that so many times. Off with you. Maybe if I leave the barn door open, men wouldn't feel like he's all alone. He wouldn't run off. No, I don't believe he would. He's too intelligent and well-fed to run away. All right, leave the barn door open. Thank you, Father. Come on, Rin. Come here, boy. too strong for religious symbols. I'm doing another in my bedroom. I see. Don't you think you could come to church this morning, Paul? Uh, uh, Father, Rin and me, uh, that is Rin and I, we were going for a walk. All right, son. But remember, God's been on your side. No one's come to claim Rin. Couldn't you offer thanks in the chapel? If, if he stays on my side, I'll talk to you later. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say to you, 
Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them that persecute and calumniate you. That you may be the children of your Father who is in heaven, who maketh his Son to rise upon the good and bad and reigneth upon the just and the unjust. For if you love them that love you, what reward shall you have? Do not even the publicans this? Father, you should have seen what happened to them and my little brother. I love my home, the fields, the river, and the village. And then it was all ruined. And I hid in the cellar, and I sneaked out at night. There was a lot of kids like me. I fought with them for a bit of bread. There's a little bit of bread. And that's how it was. I saw a lot of things Father Matthews doesn't know about. That's it. I don't dare love nobody. Something happens every time. It's me. It's something inside me. <laughs> but I love you, Rich. I love you. Father Matthew? Yes? I'm Gordon Mello with Santa Barbara. How do you do? Mailman tells me you've got a trained shepherd dog around here. That's right, Mr. Melrose. A dog did stray here. Well, the dog I'm looking for had a collar on and a nameplate. Rin Tin Tin. Yes? We have the dog. Well, that's certainly a relief. A dog from one of the best bloodlines in the world. I advertise in the papers and over the radio. I'm afraid we don't see the papers as we should, and the radio. I suspected Rin was a show dog. <laughs> oh, not show, Father. He's taken everything there is. I got him for training and for stud. Oh. Well, if the dog's around, oh, of course I'll be glad to make a small donation to the church. We, uh, we've become very attached to the dog, sir. <laughs> Come now, Father, the dog's valuable. Mr. Melrose, it's not merely possession of the dog. You see, we have an orphan here who is, well, very shy among people. The boy's sensitive, fine, very intelligent, but he suffered a great deal. This dog has brought him back a little way toward a feeling of security, a, a sense of belonging. Is there, is there any possibility of buying the dog? Not a chance, Father. Rin cost me $2,500 and plenty of sweat and trouble to train, but he's the best dog I ever had. How about getting this boy another dog? I'm afraid just any dog wouldn't do, sir. You see, it's, well, quite an involved matter of affection for a certain animal or being. Well, that's too bad, Father. Sorry, I can't help you. Well, where's Rin? I'll find him for you. Let's have the dog. Here, you tramp. You come out here. Rin belongs to Miss Melrose, Paul. I'll send a check for a month's feed and keep. But at that, I wouldn't say he got much care here. No. He's probably been leading a dog's life. 
<laughs> well, so long, Father. Oh, my son, we have quite a bit of reality to face. Yes, Father. Now about the door. We may never see him again. But if he should come back, it's going to prove something. It'll prove there's a bond between you and Rin. A bond? Yes. And no one, not even Mr. Melrose, can take that away. Really? Now about these fears. We must learn to face them, Paul. We know their origin and that's half the battle. No one in America is going to hurt you. We want to be your friends. I want always to be your friend. You like me, don't you? I dare to. I dare to like you. Yes, Paul. Go on. If I like somebody very much, it happens. Something always happens. Like Rin. And people, too. It's been that way a long, long time. This can't be so, my boy. Paul, we must read more together. In this book is all the wisdom. All that men have learned through the ages. God's own word is here, son. It'll tell us that such a thing can't be so. Let him prove it. Prove it? Let God show me this isn't always going to happen. Paul, that's close to sacrilege. It's faith we need, strong inner faith. Let him show me his all. Oh, it's a crime, the condition they let him get into. Yes, sir. He sure looks a little rough, don't he? Rough? That's hardly the word for it. Look at that. I still can't understand what made him run off. Well, a big dog like that just wants to run. Say, maybe he misses kids or something. Well, you'll have to clean and disinfect everything in the place. Okay. Mr. Melrose? Uh, yes. I'm Mrs. Graham. Father Matthew told me you have a dog here by the name of Rim Tin Tin. I'd like to buy him. Oh, of course, as the saying goes, every dog has his price, but uh, Rin's case is different. It would mean so much to the boy. Yes, I know about that. I'm sorry for the youngster. Would you take $200? I've already discussed that with Father Matthew. A and you won't change your mind? I'm sorry. Rin Tin Tin is not for sale. Oh. Why don't you get the kid a mutt? It'll do just as well. I'm afraid not. Good day, Mr. Melrose. Good day, ma'am. Now listen, hey, you stay in there and be a good dog, you understand?
his head off. He won't find you. In the daytime, he'll take you to the field. And at night, I'll hide you in the barn. All you've got to do is keep quiet while you sit. to come back here. That boy's a smart one. He could have him without you knowing it, couldn't he? Paul is in his room, asleep. If you don't disturb him, you may see for yourself. What have you done with him? Please answer the question, Paul. I was fixing things in the barn so nothing could get out. In the barn, eh? The boy's lying. That attitude will get you very little cooperation around here, sir. I'll just take a look in the... Smoke. The barn's on fire. Rin's in there! Rin's trapped in a lock! Rin! things up. Paul, oh, oh, how could you do this? Good for nothing, you, you come with me. Are you all right? Fire! We out the fire! Good for you. I'll take care of you later. Come on. I guess this is the fire, man. Be a good dog. And it better be goodbye if Rin knows what's good for him. The attachment of the dog to the boy is a circumstance no one can control, Mr. Melrose. Then quit feeding him. Chase him off. Throw something at him. Show him you don't want him here. You're ruining a valuable dog. The dog will not be abused here, sir. You, uh, like Rin, boy? Oh, yes, sir. I like him better than anything else in the world. Listen, listen. You make him think you don't like him. Throw something at him, or he's going to have to be whipped until he does obey. Instead of whipping him, wouldn't it be better to secure him for a few days? I'm a dog trainer, Father, and the best judge of my methods. Wren must be made to remember where he belongs. Why doesn't God 
step in and do something. God has his own way of stepping in, Paul, and usually at the right time. But, Father, it would have been better if the dog hadn't come to Paul in the first place. The boy improved a great deal after Rin came, Mrs. Graham. Yes, but he's gone now, and it seems to have pushed the boy further back. He may become really bitter. No, not Paul. Bitterness would have come to him in the first reaction after adversity, if it were coming at all. But it seemed so perfect at first. Paul was beginning to believe that something, even a dog, loved him. Then that man took Rin away. How can you see any good in that? Well, the scriptures tell us, if ye have faith, nothing shall be impossible unto you. God performs his mercies in devious ways, Mrs. Graham. Let's see what happens. Now that's how the hinges should have been in the first place. I'd just like to see him try and make that fence. Okie dokie.
will be whipped. Go at him. He'll be whipped. Go home, Lynn, or I'll whip you. Please go home, Lynn. I'll throw it ahead of you. Just ahead of you. You've got to think I mean it, Lynn. No, I didn't mean it. Don't let him go at the wild dogs. That's all I guess. Amen. gone far enough. I tell you, the dog attacked me. He's gone bad. Can't you understand? I've got to find him. The dog was here. He's not here now. Look, Father, with respect to your cloth and all that, I'm the one who's responsible for any killing that dog does. It's his neck or mine. Now will you tell me the truth? Mr. Melrose, we're rather given to the truth here. And I advise you to leave before you lose the protection of this cloth you claim to respect. Okay. I'll find him myself.
Melrose. I hope this will do. You know, Mrs. Graham, I value Rin more than ever. I've been sitting here planning to make him a present. Give Rin a present? Yes, it's a contention of mine that every good dog deserves a boy. I was looking for a boy to give to him. Gee, thanks an awful lot, Mr. Melrose. And if you'll excuse me, I keep for someone else around of thanks. I understand, boy. I'm sorry I can't go with you. Say a prayer for me, too, won't you? Yes, sir, I will. Come on, man. Hello, Mrs. Ryan. Graham? Hello, Father. Welcome, Paul. 